This morning, as we go to the Chitas of today, today is Friday, the sixth portion in the reading of Ayakel Pekude, as we this week, we read the two parshas, the Ayakel and Pekude. And um, we have uh, both of these portions that we come to the end of the book of Exodus, portion, we end off Chazak, Chazak. And we are holding on chapter 39, verse number 22. And then he made the robe, a aphid, the meal of the aphid. Maise Eidek was the work of a weaver, which completely blew wool. Upiamiel, and the, uh, the opening of the robe, the seifai, was turned inwards. It was like, a, uh, like an opening of a coat of armor. It's opening at a border around it, so it should not be torn. That's the, uh, the collar that went around like a hole surrounded uh, around the entire neck, and it was, it, was, uh, it was made sure that it would not tear. And then he made on the bottom of the hem of the rope, he made pomegranates of blue wool, by gummon and purple wool, and crimson wool. Moshezar, which was twisted in a bowl. Ayas Paminezav, then he made bells of pure gold. And he, then he put it on the, uh, on the, uh, he put a, uh, on the, between each pomegranate of wool, there was a bell. Ashula, mil sab, besechar in the midst of the pomegranates. Pamein, vidimain, a palm, a bell, and a pomegranate. Pamein, vidimain, a belt and a pomegranate. Uh, the shadis al shulei meil on the bottom of the hem of this of this meil of this of this garment. Kashat tziv Hashem esmeish as God has commanded meish. Ayas is a good tunnet, and then he made the linen tunics. Sheish, sheish, he made them out of uh, linen. My seirik, they were the work of a weaver. La adin lebanav, he made them. There's uh, linen, t- linen tunics. That's my snapfest. And then he made the, the cap. Sheish, he made it out of linen. And the glorious high hats of linen. Sheish, he made them also out of linen. And the linen pants also with Sheish muscles that were made out of linen. Actually, it's part of McBoyce is the glory of the high hats, meaning the glorious high hats. They wore a hat that like a it's playing more like a hat, like it looked like, I think, in the picture, like a chef's hat a little bit. Or like the chazanim wear, and I think the, uh, the, the sons wore like the, more like the chazanim wore, wear these high hats. That's maybe where it comes from, that the chazan wears a high hat. Avnit sheish, and then he made the sash twisted fine linen. Marshazar and there was blue wool, dargaman and purple wool. It's the last shani in crimson wool. My Sidoikim was all embroidered. Tashativ Hashem is Meshul, like God commanded Meshul. Yes, that's it. And then he made the show place. Nez, uh, I'm sorry, he made the show plate. The thing that, the, the plate that was upon his head. Nez, a Kodazov, it was a holy crown of pure gold. A Yicht of Allah, Bitta Pituch, a place in Kodash Hashem. And he inscribed it like an engraving. It said, like a seal, it said, holy, it said on his forehead, which means holy to God. And at the end of these two, the end of the, uh, where it came to an end, he made a hole in the two sides, and he put a he put a ribbon, a blue ribbon, placed over the cap, and it went from the top over here, over the head, and it went tied in the side. So now she says that by the means of these threads, he would place them over the cap like a sort of a crown. So it went, uh, it went, it, it was tied from the top of the, of the head over his 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 uh, his, uh, his cap, and then tied to the side to the sides of it in the back. So it was like a crown. Uh, it's impossible to say that the show place was over the cap because uh, in the Gemara, we learn that the Kayin Gadol's hair was visible between the show place and the cap. 
Because why did it need to be visible? Because he had to have place. So he was very busy, this, this head over here. Because the Kayin Gado had a show place, and between his cap and, and the show plate, he had his tefillin. According to some, he wore two pairs of tefillin. So he, he was a place to Kayin Gado, he, put his, he wore his tefillin during the week. Between the show place and the cap, where he placed the tefillin. And the show place was placed on the Kayin Gado's forehead. Hence, the cap was above, and the show place was below, so that the meaning is over the cap and from above. What's the meaning of this man found the problem this matter? Namely, here the text states, and they placed it upon a cord of blue wool. And the section dealing with the commandment in Exodus says, and they shall place it upon a cord of blue wool. If I say, and the cord of blue wool was composed of threads with which to tie the show place to the cap, since the show place extended only from ear to ear. Thus, how should the cutting gondol tie it to his forehead? Threads of blue wool were fastened to the show place at both ends and in the center. Let's see if I can show you a picture. Let's see if there's a picture here. So, uh, uh, you'll see the picture, you'll understand it easily. That's the picture. So there was in the middle of uh, in the middle of, uh, there was in the middle of of, of, the, of the of the plate, there was a, a stream that went through, and so too on the sides. And that was the way it looked, something like that. I don't know if the hat looked like that exactly. Here's another picture. Okay. So, uh, so then that's what it was. Two threads were at each end. One above the show place and one below it towards the forehead, similar to the center, where it's easy to tie it in this way. It was not costly to tie fewer than two threads. Therefore, it says, upon the cord of blue wool, and upon its cord of blue wool. And he would tie there the threads to the two ends, one from above and one from the below the show place, all of them together behind him. So he takes the two, the, 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 blue, the blue thread. In the middle, go with the other, to the back of his head. The two sides would go to the back of his head, and he would tie them all together in back of his head, so that it should move again from his head. So that uh, opposite Nathan would place the show place upon the cap. Do not admonish. Do not be astonished that it said, does not say blue wool in plural, since there are many threads. Because we find regarding the 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 apron that uh, we that we that uh, regard to the chayshin the apron says and that shall be fastened to the chayshin and to the rings to the rings of the apron with blue cord. Thus we see we are forced to explain that there are no fewer than two threads, even though the text says cord in a singular, because two rings on the chayshin were on the two ends of the chayshin. And two rings of the of the aphid, one of two shoulder straps of the aphid opposite them. And according to the usual way of tying rings together, there are four threads, one for every ring. In any case, fewer than two threads is impossible. So the entire work of the Mishkan was done. Ayasu b'nei Yisrael and the children of Israel had done kachol ashetiv Hashem. Whatever God commanded us, Mesha, whatever God commanded Mesha came us. Now she says, the work according to all that the Lord commanded. So they brought the Mishkan to Mesha, as oil was called Kalov. They brought the tent and all its vessels with Krasam and all its furnishing, Krasha with the planks and its bars, and its sockets. So now she says, because they could not erect it. For some reason, they couldn't put it together. So Moshe had done no work in the Mishkan. The only one blessed be, he said, 
left the task of putting it together. So Moshe Rabbeinu had the mitzvah of putting it together. Since no human being could erect it by himself because it was the heaviness of the planks. And no human was strong enough to put them together. Up, Moshe was able to put it up. Moshe said to the Holy One, bless me, how is it possible for a human being to erect this Mishkan? And God replied, replied, you work with your hands. And Moshe appeared to be erected and it arose by itself. You have to realize, every one of these planks was 10 amas. That means at least 15 feet in the height. Maybe according to some, it was even higher. At least like 15 feet in the height. And a cube and a half in, in, its, in its width. That's another three, three amas, or an arm and a half. That's another three amas, so three feet in its width. This was a very heavy, heavy, heavy planks. And that's why the Abish said, you put your finger to it and it will go up. Lama Dalla, verse 34, is going to stay out in the coverings of ram skins, red. <clears throat> the covering of the fucking skins. And the dividing curtains. they brought in the ark and say, the ark of testimony as bad of its poles as our capetus and the ark of. As our shulchan, they brought in the table, it's called table of an old slab vessels. As lechem upon him, they brought in the showbreads. As meneda hatayda, they brought in the beautiful meneda. As neda seha, its lamps. As Neda Marocha, the lamp that was set in order, all as Koke loves all its vessels, as Shem and Amur, they brought in the oil for lighting. As Mizbach Hazov, they brought in the, 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 the altar of the golden altar, as Hashem Mishcha, and the anointing oil. Sakatena Sasam, they brought in all the, all the incense, as Masa Pesra El Mel, they brought in the entrance to the tent of the Mishka. As Mizbach and Achesha, that they brought in the copper altar. That's Mirbar and Chaisha, the beautiful grating around the copper altar. Ashalay, which was part of the altar, as bad of its poles, as called tail of all its vessels, as Akir, the wash pan, as Kanai and its base. As Kala Chotzer, the bottom, the hanging of the Chotzer, as Abedel, its pillars, as Adenel, its sockets, as Masach Lashar Chotzer, they brought in the screen, the entrance, the beautiful screen, the beautiful curtain that was for the entrance of the, the, the base Amidash. As Big Dad started, brought him the meshwork of garments, which covered all the all the all the all the vessels. As Big Dad Kodeshlad, they brought him all the beautiful garments that they made for Aaron Akoyin, for the high priest, for the Kayin Gado. As Big Day Banav and all the garments that the Kayahanim would all wear. You see this said over and over again. But all in accordance with what God told Meshlabi. Exactly what the Jewish people did as Kala Veda, all the work. Verse 43. Vayar Mesha Mesha saw as Kala Malach. Mesha Rabbein saw this whole beautiful work. In the Asaka Shatsiva Hashem. And they did exactly what God did. God said, Kain Asik, that's what they did. Ayavarech, Isa, Mesha, and Mesha gave them a piece. And now she says, what's the blessing of Sifra to Medrash? He said to them, may it be with the will, may it be his will, that he should, the Shechina should rest in the work of your hands. May be the will of God that you do all your works, God should rest in the work of your hands. And this is one of the 11 Psalms in the prayers of Moshe. And you have it in Tilim on chapter 90. And that completes the Chumash for today. Now we go to the Tanya today. We're in the middle of chapter 37 of Tanya. So up till here, the Alter Rebbe has spoken of the effects of a mitzvah on the power of one's animal soul. Use in performing it, right? Dr. Rebbe says, we elevate the animal soul. He now states, not only does one animal soul ascend from Clippers, like the holiness when he performs a mitzvah, but also all food and drinks that sustain one 
and gave them the strength to perform the mitzvah are likewise elevated from the domain of Klippa Plague. Based on this idea, Baal Tadeba explains how the vitality of all physical objects of the world, which currently draw the vitality from, again, from a Klippa, a covering that shines, will be elevated to the realm of homes. And this is how he explains. Every Jewish soul is given the ability and the responsibility to elevate a portion of this physical world which belongs to it. This elevation is, is accomplished by the means of the 613 commandments. As mentioned, there are ever two categories in mitzvahs, 248 positive and 365 negative. Similarly, the elevating effect of mitzvahs on a physical matter takes two forms. One in a positive, by doing an action of positive, and one negative, not doing something. There's 248 positive, there's 365 negative. What is the difference between these two? To explain these two aspects of elevation, accomplished by two categories of mitzvahs, Dr. Rebbe uses each category as an analogy to draw from the human body. There's 248 positive commands correspond to the body's 248 limbs. Indeed, the function of these mitzvahs resembles that of a limb. Every organ of the body is a vehicle for a particular faculty of the soul and brings that faculty into active expression. I see through my eyes, I speak through my mouth, I, 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 I hear through my ears, I think through my brains, I walk through my feet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Every positive mitzvah is a vehicle, so too. Every positive vehicle is an expression. Just like I see through my eyes, every mitzvah is also it's an expression of godliness. Something, it's like a vehicle like the vehicle through which godliness comes within. That's the concept of a mitzvah. And that's why it's called the limbs of God. Just an analogy. Just like the limbs expresses the power of the soul. It's the way the soul comes into each and every limb. The way the soul functions through the body. So too, positive commandments is the concept of the way the soul comes in. The way godliness comes within. This concept is called the pneumius. So really a positive commandment is like a vessel to the light of God. It's a conduit that this mitzvah is fashioned. It's the Ibish to self. God, God is one who came up with this mitzvah because he knows exactly the conduit, the vessel, the way Godness needs to be expressed through this mitzvah. And that's why you need to do the mitzvah. Khasa. You need to make sure to do the mitzvah correctly. Because if you're going to have you do the mitzvah incorrectly, then the conduit, then, the, then the, the, it's going to be fashed up. It's going to be not complete. And the light of God cannot express itself. It needs to be expressed itself through the right vessel. That's the concept of a mitzvah sase. That's the aspect of the mitzvah. There's 248 mitzvah sase. What is a mitzvah sase, sir? Commandments you shall not do. You're not doing anything. It's not something you're doing. It's something you're not doing. The, the prohibitive commandments, mitzvahs, laces, and numbering 365. They correspond to the 365 blood vessels of the body. Sinews, it's where the blood flows through their function to is like, the, is like of a blood vessel. The blood vessel acts as a conduit, channeling blood in the right direction, so it will not be randomly wasteful, dispersed through the body. Similarly, the prohibitive commandment prevents the life force of wholeness from being funneled into clippers. That's the point. The point is, it's not something that comes within a mitzvah. It makes sure that holiness going to the correct area. And it's not going to places that it doesn't belong. And that's by 
negating something, making sure you don't do a sin. Because by doing, in essence, a sin, you're opening up an avenue that doesn't belong in the body. You have now directed the blood to places that it doesn't belong. Because by doing this, I've given vitality to something that it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not allowed to be. So that's why we have to make sure that our veins are healthy and the blood goes, which is symbolic to the Kedusha, that is flowing through my, 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 my body, through my neshama, and through the good that I do, make sure that it doesn't have any outside concepts or going to places that it doesn't belong. And that's why I need to protect myself not to do a sin which would create this avenue. And that's the, the, that's the, that's the negative commandment. So there's many, many facets to this, and as explained in Siddhis Kabbalah, but this is a beautiful concept that the Rebbe is, Alter Rebbe is going to explain. So similarly, the private commandment to prevent the life force of holiness from being funneled into Clippus, thereby increasing their power. They channel life force towards the deserving recipient. That's what keeps the thing in the right place. So when a negative thing comes towards me, I should don't do it. So now keep the flow going on the right way. That's why an Aveda, it means to go away. The word Aveda means to, to move off. I am going down the right road, and suddenly I veer off. I'm go suddenly I've gone into another road. I've suddenly veered off to the wrong road. So the Aveda keeps me, it's like the, uh, the side rails, keeps me on the right path and make sure that I don't move off the way. All the souls of Israel, representing the vitality of all physical matter, fulfill all commandments, drawing down God's light by performing positive and confining it to the realm of wholeness to make sure that you keep it focused, observing the, not to do the negatives, they elevate the vitality of the entire world. And clip of negative, all we elevate the entire world. We can do all the mitzvahs, we would elevate the world. And if we didn't do any avedas, we would make sure that all the holiness that's in the world would not go to anything but to its right place. That's the beauty of mitzvahs, I say, and mitzvahs, I say, according to this teaching in time. And this is a summary. The subjects is followed, discussed. Today's Vedachedes. <laughs> Additional virtue of mitzvah involves the action aside from the function of elevating one's animal soul mentioned above. The divine lighting soul energy closed, is closed in the utterance of the letters of one's speech. In the Torah study and prayer, or the like, any, any mitzvah, or any mitzvah doing an action. I call Giduli Vachayes Madam derived its entire growth and vitality from the bud, which is of Klippus Nega itself. Jimmy Klippus Nega Mam. Can call Eislim Why it comes through? Everything comes through the blood. The blood gives strength to the whole body. And where does the blood come from? The blood comes from your food that you eat. And it becomes your blood. So that means ultimately, if I use uh, my body and my strength and my capabilities and my talents and my verse and my voice and my thoughts, I use it out for godliness. So now I elevated the food that I ate because the food that has become my blood has given, the, given me strength to do all these mitzvahs. Because they were under, until I did the mitzvah, they were under the domain of clippers, now you get the eye culture. So they were under the domain of this shell that does, that shines, that does shine. And it's still, but it's a shell. It's still a covering. And now when I do the mitzvah, I now elevate everything. I break the shell. I reveal the light into Gedusha. I, I channeled it to the right direction. I have, a, I have all this vitality. I've eaten this food and I drank, I drank this water or whatever I did. And now I have this whole strength, and I use this strength, this energy. I channeled it into the right direction. 
I've I've accomplished the elevation of my of 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 food of all food that I've eaten. I've elevated my soul. I've elevated my animal soul. I've elevated my food, the energy that's in this food, which automatically elevates all the food. And now, but in performance of the mitzvah, I take the energy with the energy drive for the food and, and, and drink. I've, this clipper is transformed from evil to good. Again, evil doesn't mean that I ate non kosher. Evil means that it's clipper snaiga. It's a, it's a clipper that shines. Until I do that mitzvah, uh, it's no man's land. It's, 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 it's up for the taking. And, 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 any, and, and this energy can be used for uh, anything. So that's not good because, uh, because uh, I should use it for good. I should use it right away for good. This clip is transformed from evil to good and resorted into all of it by the means of the energy of the animal soul that grows from it. Meaning the energy nourished by those objects that derive the vitality from clip food. Yeah, any food is from clip. Of course, it's, it's basically. Oh, that's food on Shabbos. That's it. Food on Shabbos is a whole different thing. Because the food itself is for a mitzvah. But in generally, it's not. The food is food. It's a, it's, it's a loud food. And you're allowed to eat it's kosher food. But it's neither for the good or for the bad. It could be for either. And that's why it's in the, it's in the no man's land. and may be very dangerous territory. Because anybody can come and take it for what they want to do with it. And your animalistic soul can come first and grab it and use the energy for negative things. And then you have no kayak to do, the, to do your positive things. So therefore, to make sure to take it right away, the energy you have, the first thing you do, take the energy and use it for positive. And that's how you elevate not only your animal soul, you elevate and your body. You elevate all the food that you have eaten that gave you energy to your body. Which, which by doing the mitzvah, this is the inner will of God. Elishim has the part which he mentioned before that when we do a mitzvah with this energy, we, there's no concealment because that is the will of our Kaddish Baruch, the wisdom and the will of our Kaddish Baruch, the will of God. So the vitality, the vitality extended in the performance of mitzvah is also observed, like the mitzvah itself, into the blessed and safe, which is his will expressed in every mitzvah. So that's what happens every mitzvah I do. My godly soul self understood is elevated into holiness. My animalistic soul is elevated at that moment into holiness. The energy of all food is elevated into holiness. And with their vitality, the energy of the animal souls also likewise elevate and absorb into ain't safe into the infinite life. And since the energy necessary for performing mitzvah was supplied by food and drink, the vitality of the food and drink is likewise absorbed in the infinite life. Together with the mitzvah who performed performance. Made possible. And thereby, all of Clippers, all of this covering that shines, all of it constitutes the vitality of this physical and corporal world as a whole. Not only did I do, do I elevate the food that I ate, I now elevated the world. Which is the whole world will ascend as well. When will this come about? The whole neshama, divine soul of all of Israel, we all come out of one soul. We have one source, one humongous soul, which is a maschalekes brought to the shishim which is divided as Kabbalah, as the Zoya says, into 600,000 particular offshoots. The, the standard figure for members of the Jewish nation 
all individual souls being further subdivided into 600,000 general souls, as we'll explain further, so you have the 600,000 general souls that all come out of, we are called B'nai Yisrael. Jacob is the source of all souls, Jewish souls, Yaakov Avinu. And this soul had 12 tribes would have 600,000 general souls that went out of Egypt, 600,000 general souls, which these 600,000 general souls are comprised of the 12 tribes of the Jewish nation. And every soul that comes out of that, those general souls. So what's the journey of the Jewish nation? Is that the, 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 that this, all these souls that come out of one soul should, will fulfill each individual soul 613 mitzvahs. So we need to accomplish at every neshama, general soul, will accomplish 613 commandments. That we, they were given the 600, they were given the title. These 600,000 general souls were given the title. So they were given the mission to accomplish 613 mitzvahs. Shasa Leishasa, and they will refrain from the transgression of 365 prohibition. Lehafit Shasa Gidim, to restrain the 365 blood vessels of the animal soul in the body. So that it not draw down nurture to receive the vitality by means of such a transgression from any one of the three of the three complete unclean flippers from which are derived the 365 biblical prohibitions. Those are the three un, those are the three unclean clippers that we need to stick away from. Because the second we, we get involved with an Aveda, now not only the, 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 we open an avenue that our good is connected to evil. It's connected to, 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 to a place that it doesn't belong to. But on faith, shame and abundance, whether they are, they are prohibitions in the Torah or there are rabbinical prohibitions. The rabbis added to those prohibitions. So since all that derives its totality from three unholy kippers cannot rise to holiness, we're a Jew to transgress any prohibition and thereby causing a particular blood vessel associated with that prohibition to receive vitality from clipper. Now you have become, you're given a hold, you're given an avenue, you've opened up like Chas Shalom. One of your, 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 your sinews, one of my sinews, one of my blood vessels has given an opening to something else to come into this, to, the, to this side of having blood. Now something else, Chas Shalom, has come into this vessel. What happens? Now, when you let in outer influences, you opened up your vessel for other things that did not belong in this vessel. This vessel was clean. This vessel was straight. This vessel had a beautiful connection. Now you let cholesterol into the vessel. And what happens? Now you have a blockage. And now this blockage doesn't let because it's tuma. You're impure. That's the concept of impurity. You're brought in. What's impurity? Impurity is when you, when you, the purity was out of you. There's always impurity. But I connected to impurity. I didn't have to connect to it. I didn't have to go there. And I decided to, to get involved with impurity. But now the impurity became part of my existence. What happens? I'm impure. I can't go to the base of my gosh. I can't, I can't become part of, I can't, from a coin, I can't eat trauma. If I'm a regular Jew, I can't go to the base of my gosh. Why? Because the base of Midas is holy and I'm impure. And what happens? I can become impure, knit the metallish to the maze. I became impure with the three impure clips. She 
that you have to realize, I have to realize when I do an Aveda, I will never ever get out of this impurity unless I do tshuva. So until I do tshuva, I'm connected to this impure concept. And now I'm impure. And now I am also, I'm like in jail. I need to get out of jail. I need to get out of this, this, this enclosure. I need to get out of this negativity. I need to get rid of this negativity. And that is the vital nullifying all the story where I can get rid of this impurity. When I can nullify the, the over here, I'm going to the mikvah exactly for impurity. Over here, this impurity needs to be nullified. I need to do tshuva. It's written, that ultimately God will banish unclean spirit from the earth. So that's why ultimately the ultimate purpose is when I will never ever be connected to impurity. God will banish impurity from the world. I'll never be able to come part of it, never even be able to do it in impurity. But there won't be impurity anymore. So therefore, I will never have it. I will not, but until then, I am, might be connected to impurity. So similarly, anything that derives its vitality from them can never ascend to holiness. Therefore, only the observance of all 365 prohibitions allows the entire vital soul to ascend without any part of it held back by impurities of this covering. To realize something very powerful, the power of not of, a, of an Aveda. We don't realize, talk about the greatness of doing good, but the power of doing something, control oneself not to do something bad, is more, might be more powerful than even the doing good. Because as long as I've done an Aveda, God forbid, then all the mitzvahs that I'm done is now being weighed down by this Aveda, by this negative thing. And until I break this negative thing, all the good is going to be impossible to elevate myself because of this negative. Amach mitzvah essay. Well, furthermore, every individual soul fulfilled the 248 positive commandments. What is the 248 positive commandments? Which thereby draws godliness into the world. And the truth is, whether I'm pure or not, I need to do a mitzvah. One thing doesn't take away from another because the concept of bringing godliness into the world is a, is a concept on its own. So even though I might be impure, I still need to, as expression says, God says, I dwell within your impurities. So the concept of a mitzvah is to bring God in the world, to bring godliness in this world. And that every one of us should try to do every mitzvah that we can do. Because every mitzvah that we can do brings the concept of godliness in this world. To elevate to him and to bind and unite with him the entire vital soul, which is 248 limbs of the body in the perfect unity. Church is the effect of a mitzvah in uniting the vital animal soul with God and thereby becoming actually one with him. So that's where his expression of Tillam. Every Shabbos, we say it in that, we sur made but say to you, go away from evil and do good. And there's a whole argument, we should we first go away from evil and do good, or maybe just do good. If you do a lot of good, maybe you'll stop doing evil, and slowly you'll, you'll get away from evil. So in accordance with, the, with, with, with his will, and thereby be a boat for him in the lower realms. And so great is this unity that they, the limbs of the body, with the vitality of the animal soul invested in them, become a chariot for God, as it were, to the patriarchs, whose every limb was totally submission to the divine will. Therefore, the design designated as God's chariot. And so will every Jew become a chariot in the performance of riches. So again, 
Dr. Rebbe just gave, it a, gave a beautiful interpretation to the concept of a mitzvah and the aspect of an Aveda. The concept of an is not to bring something that doesn't belong into your existence, not to open up avenues for things that don't belong in your existence, because once you open up that avenue, now you have to get rid of it. Now you, once you became impure, you have to become pure. You need to break that avenue. You need to go and figure out a way how to eliminate that, that concept that came into you. And then the concept of creating yourself as an avenue for godliness, as a venue for godliness, 248 positive commandments. That's what we say in our davani. David wanted that we should be a conduit for his godliness in this world. The peace of Hebrew and the Torah mitzvahs. If he gave us 248 positive commandments and 365 negative commandments, because both together, both together, the positive and the negative, both create that we become a true conduit of God's light in this world and ultimately the elevation of this entire world. So the more we can connect to the positive commandments and the more we can. We can, be, we can stick away from any negative commandments, the more we have the capability of accomplishing the purpose of our God created the world, and that, that this world should be totally elevated. Not only I should be elevated, but the whole world should be elevated. And it should be a revelation of God. And there should be a total connection and unity between God and the world through my actions and through my service in this world. That completes the time of the day. I hope that you will uh, learn tiny tomorrow and Chomish tomorrow on your own. As first of all, I hope you all go to Shul and hear the ending of the ending of the, the book of uh, Genesis, the whole book of Shemais, and we say Chazak, Chazak, Benis Chazak, that God should give us the strength to go from one from one from one aspect to a, to another, Mitshabayikra, as we Travel into the book of Leviticus, Bezat Hashem. Tomorrow, Shabbos HaChodesh. Tomorrow, we read the, the portion of the Torah that talks about HaChodesh Hazel Lachem Reis Kadoshim, which is the first commandment that God gave the Jewish people in the land of Egypt. The concept of Reis Chodesh Nisan, first month of the Jewish calendar, which is happening this week in Mitch Shem, Reis Chodesh Nisan. And um, Shabbos Shabbos. The Shabbos that blesses the new month, the month of uh, the month of Nisa. So I want to wish everybody a wonderful, beautiful Shabbos. I uh, take this opportunity on end of Shabbos to uh, give wish you and my birthday tomorrow is my birthday, uh, my 60th birthday. So uh, I want to wish you all a day uh, to bless you. You should be a conduit for godliness in the world, a conduit in the world for goodness, and we should all be a conduit for God and a vessel for God to bring this whole world to a better place and a holier place of understood, then we shall all be blessed with long life and happy life and healthy life. Today is the 24th day of the month. The Tillam of the day is Hallel today. In your Tillam, Psalms, the Hallel, just chapter 113 to chapter 118. And if you do those chapters, you have done the Chitas of the day. I wish you a good Shabbos and I will... Uh, Mitch and we we'll together with you on Zoom on uh, on Sunday morning at eight o'clock. We'll continue and we'll go into the book of Ayyukra. Have a wonderful and beautiful show.